Hey guys, it's Jess from Peace Love Books, and Tim here with my July wrap up. I read a total of 26 books this month. Now, two of them were novellas, um, but I read all the rest. I think I read like maybe seven audiobooks. I was flying through audiobooks because I have started, so I don't know how people listen on audiobooks at two times the speed. I started out being able to do one and a half and now I have been able to get acclimated to 1.75, but when people are talking to double speed, two times the speed, I am like, they sound like robots and I just cannot get into it. But I have been listening to them a little bit faster and I've been sewing a lot, so I have been getting through a lot of audiobooks. And I went on vacation the beginning of this month to the Bahamas, so I had a lot of reading time then and it is my really only full month of summer I've had that I have not had to deal with house hunting because we finally found a house. We get the keys to it this Friday and I'm super excited, so maybe I will include some kind of empty tour with you guys on the in my latest vlog we'll see about that but I'm super excited about that but August is gonna be crazy so there's not gonna be another reading month like this because I'm moving and school starts so but I will go ahead and talk to you about the 26 books I read this month the first book is one of my absolute favorite books of the entire month, and that is Lover Eternal by J.R. Ward. This is book two in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. This was Rage's story, yes, and he has this curse on him that this beast comes out when he gets heightened emotion, so he always has to like find a release, and he falls in love with this woman. She's not a vampire, so she's thrown into the vampire world. This is book two, like I said, absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars obsessed with this series. Next book is was a huge letdown for me and that is Rain by Elizabeth Knox. This is a motorcycle romance and it was like a cop female falls for the uh, leader of a motorcycle gang because she goes undercover and the writing was just not good. I gave this a one star guys. Like how many books have I rated a one star? Like five. This one was just Oh, so bad. At first she's like, oh, well, I can go and do whatever I want when I'm in the motorcycle club because I'm a woman and I can do what I want. And then the next moment she's like, oh, but I'm an undercover cop, so I, like, shouldn't do anything bad. And then something happens where, like, the the hierarchy of who the motorcycle clubs go to makes no sense in this book. Like, it's not as realistic as you can get with motorcycle romances. This was not realistic at all. Like, Ugh. And the writing style was annoying, the main character was annoying. I was so over this book by the time I was done with it, so I gave it a one star. The next book I read was an e-arc, and that was Want You by Jen Frederick. I was super shocked how this book ended up because I'm used to the Aaron Watt Jen Frederick, so she's part of Aaron Watt, and that's the Royal series, and then some YA. This one's a lot on the darker side. It is a mafia romance, so it is about Lika, who is has lived on the streets pretty much his whole life. He's used to taking care of himself. He finds this little girl on the streets as well, takes her under his wing and kind of raises her. There's not that big of an age gap. I want to say it's like six or seven years. And so we start out when they first meet and he takes care of her and then we flash forward to when he forces her to go to boarding school and she's there for like four years and then she comes back because she's in love with Lika and they're supposed to like only see each other as brother and sister but really they're in love with each other and Lika won't do anything with her. He's like, that's gross. I can't like her like that. I'm like pretty much her guardian. And he works with Mafia, so it is a very dangerous kind of romance, and he is doing everything in his power to protect her from the bad people, but she is like, I'm a woman. You need to see me as a woman, and so it's their romance. It was really good. I gave it a four out of five stars. It was kind of slow because the first like half is um, them growing up, and then we get into the part where the actual story takes place, so it was definitely Definitely new for me from Jen Frederick, but it was still a pretty good read. The next book I read, another favorite of month, and that is Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. This is book two in this series, and this is a motorcycle romance series. Book three comes out this month, and I'm so excited, but that's beside the point. This is Zeus's story, and Zeus is the dad of the guy in the first book, King, and Zeus is the, I'm pretty sure he's the president of the motorcycle club, and he, the beginning starts out of him saving the life of Lou when she was really little um, during a shootout for the motorcycle club. Lou's parents are awful, and she is battling cancer. I don't think that's a spoiler because you know it from the very beginning. She's battling cancer, and so Zeus goes to jail, and she is in the hospital trying to fight cancer, and she starts writing letters to him, and they write letters to each other. And it ends up being their romance, so it is a huge age gap, but it's so good. I don't know why, but it's so good, and it's kind of Lou 
taking her life for herself and going to the dark side and like finally giving in to everything she's wanted to do including being with Zeus and I normally hate age gaps but I was so for this book. They're just like um, the Hades Hangman series by Tilly Cole, you fall in love with every single character in this book. It's not just the main couple, you know all of the guys in the motorcycle club and there's a lot of drama and there's a lot of tension and you don't know like if they're gonna get out of it or not because there's a mole or like in their motorcycle club so someone who's telling the bad guys things about their club and so you grow like especially the guy who is um, ends up protecting Lou in this book. I loved him. I love all the characters and it's just an amazing series. Five out of five stars. One of my favorites of the month. The next book I read was Off the Grid by Monica McCarty. This is book two in the Lost Platoon series. So the first book is all about these guys in this platoon or like off of these really super amazing marine guys who have their own group. They're like super secret and uh, something happens where they know someone was giving away their secret so they were ambushed and only some of them survived and the survivors have to go into hiding so that they don't aren't discovered and so this girl one of her brothers is the one that had actually died and so she thinks that something happened to him she doesn't know if he's alive or not and she's an investigative reporter who already has not the best reputation as a reporter and so she had a fling with one of her brother's best friends who's also in this platoon and he's actually alive and in hiding and so she tracks him down and it's their romance and her tracking him down while someone's trying to track her down and kill her for what she knows. So it's definitely action packed. The romance was pretty good. It did slow down a lot in the middle because it was like him trying to distract her. So I gave it a four to five stars but super fun action packed series so I'd recommend it. The next book I read was an audiobook, and that is All Broke Down by Cora Carmack. This was a reread. I have read this before, but I think I got it from the library because I don't even own this book. I own books one and three in hard copy. But this is Silas Moore's story, and he was best friends with the guy in the first book who was a really bad guy, and so people don't really like him that much. And what happens is he in jail meets Dylan who's actually like an activist so she was at a protest and got thrown in jail. And it's their romance, it's a football romance, college, really cute. I gave it a 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5, I don't remember. I really love this series and they're really adorable college romances and Silas kind of is trying to fight his path in life because he feels like he's going to end up like his friend who got in a lot of trouble in the first book and that's where his past kind of was leading him and he's trying to show that he can be better but he feels like his only way is through football. It's really, really cute, and I loved it. I also love the audiobook. Like, if you list, like audiobooks, listen to the series, because the narrators are awesome. The next book I read was the first book for the Romance Readathon I did, and that is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a kind of like a love triangle. It's about a woman who is married to the love of her life from high school, and he ends up going missing and presumed dead. Few years down the road she is engaged to someone else and it turns out that her husband is actually not dead so she has a husband and a fiance. I think that this focused a lot more on like life and finding yourself than it did on the romance so I didn't love it as much as I wanted to because I thought it was like gonna be full-on heavy romance and it wasn't um, so it was a little bit slower I thought the ending was pretty predictable like at least halfway through I knew who she was gonna pick and why and all the reasons behind it so I did give it a four out of five stars I didn't love it as much as I wanted to but it was a really cute book so all the next books are going to be from this readathon, and I'm going to link my vlog down below so you can see my thoughts as I was reading these books. But the next book I read on audio, and that is Faking It by Cora Carmack. I am just flying through Cora's audiobooks. They're so good. This one is about the guy who was in love with the girl from the first book in the series, and he didn't get her. He was her best friend, and she chose the hot... British professor. But this is his book and he ends up fake dating this girl who is totally out of his normal realm of dating. They Neither one of them are normally date people like each other but she needed someone to be her fake boyfriend so he was just there at the wrong place the wrong time kind of situation and they end up falling in love and it was really cute. I did give it a 4 to 5 stars. It's not my favorite in the series but it's still a cute fake dating romance. The next book I read was another favorite of the month. I had some amazing books that are like my top favorites of the year, and that is Shattered Bean by Tahara Mafi. Now, okay, I'm gonna say, I end up reading the novella later. I'm gonna tell you now. I read that novella from Warner's perspective. When I was reading this, I'm like, uh, I like Adam. Like, she is doing really, like, awesome romance with Adam. Like, who is this Warner guy? Why does everybody love him? And I'm like, Warner's kind of a jerk. Like what? So this is about a girl who can't touch people or else she kills them and she spent like a year in this insane asylum and Warner takes her to use her as his 
weapon, I guess, and stuff happens. It's a dystopian kind of world. I'm reading it for the romance, and I'm loving the romance, and the ending was crazy, so I immediately had to read the novella, and now I'm going to try to read book two. I think it actually won my pick what I read next for... August, hopefully. I think it was in first place. So I love this. I gave it a five out of five stars. Can't wait to continue on. Before I forget, I do want to mention Friend Zone by Bella Aurora won my pick what I read next for July. And I've been trying to read it and I just cannot get into it. And because it's the book two with on now and I have tons of stuff to review, I did end up DNFing that book at 15%. The dialogue and the like inner dialogue or whatever that's called where it's like them talking was just so cheesy and the writing style was not my favorite and like lots of exclamation points where there should not be and I just like could not so I did DNF that in case you were wondering that's the deal with that. The next book I read was another favorite, and that is In Bed with a Highlander by Maya Banks. I finally read this. It's book one in this romance series, and this is about Marin, who is captured at the beginning of the book because of something about her. Everyone wants to marry her, and so she is actually saved by Ewan... I almost said Ewan McGregor. It's Ewan McCabe. Wow. She is saved by this um, Highland leader. I forget what that title is, but he's like the leader of their clan. And he ends up having to marry her because he needs to protect her from all the other guys who are trying to kidnap her and forcefully marry her. And then it's their romance. There's so much action, so much intrigue. Oh my goodness. And I love Marin. She's so headstrong and doesn't take crap from anybody. And even though she sometimes is in the wrong, she still sticks by her guns. And I love it. I loved her. Cannot wait to read the other books in the series. It's amazing. Gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was If You Were Mine by Melanie Harlow. This is a fake dating book again, which I didn't know when I started it. She hires someone to be her date to a wedding because she's tired of always sitting at the singles table. And she spends the night with him. And then she doesn't know if the relationship obviously is real or not because you never know that with fake dating. This did advertise it as like a weekend away snowed in together, like turned into a weekend or something like because of the snow, so I read this for the trapped part, like the stranded category for the romance readathon. This did not fall into that category at all. Um, I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. I did think it was pretty good in the beginning. I was really enjoying the wedding aspect, but then it got really okay with them always doubting themselves and doubting the relationship, and that just got old, so I gave it a three out of five stars. The next book I read I was super excited for because so many people love this series. I think it has over a five star rating, and that is Crank by Adriana Locke. Ad yeah, Adriana Locke, and this book is about a girl named Sienna who owns her own clothing boutique, and she smashes the headlight of this guy's car, and it's Walker who owns the auto shop, and he's super wary about romance, and he always pushes people away, but he's super attracted to Sienna, so it's their romance, and she ends up working in his shop in order to pay off the car because she can't give him the money and it's like the small town kind of big family he's got a lot of family she has a lot of family at home but she's not close to them physically she is emotionally she loves her family but they don't live near each other and it was cute but it like wasn't anything special I gave it a three out of five stars I wasn't excited when I was reading it but I didn't hate it so yeah the next book I listened to on audio, and that is Rule by Jay Crownover. I had already read this a long time ago, did not remember a single thing, so I re-listened to it. And this is about Rule, who is the owner? He works at a tattoo shop. I don't know if he owns it. And he lost his twin brother, and he feels like it's his fault. That happened a few years ago. And his family's really distanced himself because of it, and he's distanced himself from them because of it. And Shaw was his twin brother's best friend, and she comes over every Sunday, drags him out of bed, and takes him to family brunch, lunch, whatever, and Shaw is secretly in love with Rule, so it's their romance. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I think I gave it 4 out of 5 stars the first time around, but I really loved it. I loved Shaw. I loved how she wouldn't take no for an answer from Rule, even though how he pushed her away so much, and I loved all the characters in this. It was just a really fun series read that you fall in love with all the characters and want all of their stories. The next book I read was actually for school. We had to put together a unit plan for this book, and I'd never read it before, and that is Rice Without Rain by Min Fong Ho. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. This is a story about a 
girl who lives in a rice farm and of course in Thailand and their crops are dying because they've had really bad weather it's going through a drought and it has to do with like the revolution that was going on in Thailand against the government and it was this really famous protest where a lot of people died that she was actually involved in this city so it was a really eye-opening book about Thailand and I loved putting together a unit plan but I read that book, I didn't give it a rating because it wasn't for pleasure, it was for school, but definitely a very interesting read. The next book I read was during my weekend reading vlog, which I'll link down below, and that is Palm Sauce University 3 by Candy Steiner, and this was the a reread for me because book 4 was coming out, and this is just a really dramatic series about fraternities and sororities in college, in a beach college, because they're right by the ocean. It was funny because in the fourth book they were talking about getting their tan before Halloween and I'm like oh my god in October it's pretty cold here but I love this series so much so much drama and it goes through a bunch of different characters so it's kind of like Greek so you're following a lot of people and their own dramas and everybody's hooking up with everybody and it's so addicting you can't put it down you gotta check out this series I gave this one a five out of five stars again then I picked up Black Number 4 by Candy Steiner, and this is actually about Skylar, who is in all the PSU books, and this is her own book. This came out in 2015, but it takes place after PSU Season 3, during Season 4, which just came out this month, and this is, Skylar's a professional poker player, so it's about her getting ready for this huge tournament so she can win money, so she can pay off school and help her family, and this new guy comes into the college that she really likes, but he has history with one of her sorority sisters, and... They, he has this huge secret and Skylar really likes him. So this was super dramatic. I loved it, gave it a five out of five stars. I love following Skylar and getting the guy's point of view because he is not in the PSU books, so we don't get his point of view in the PSU books, but this is really good. Then I ended up picking up Legacy by Candy Steiner. I got an arc of this and this is book four in the Palm South University series or season four that she did rename them so they all have a different name now instead of just PSU season one, two, or three, or four. And this one is takes place the same time as Black Number Four and so I think the reason I didn't enjoy this as much is because I literally just read Black Number Four and this first scene is the same first scene as that one and now we do get some other characters in this one that we don't get in Black Number Four. We still got a lot of Skylar too much in my opinion so I really didn't care about Skylar's part because I already knew her part of the story because she had a whole book about it and I feel like this wasn't as dramatic as the other seasons. Like we have drugs and it scandals in the first ones and there was just people who going on about their relationships in this one. There wasn't drama outside of relationships, I feel like, and I wanted more of that, so I gave us a four out of five stars. I still love this series, but this didn't give me the dramatic, soap opera-y feel that all the other ones did. But still, amazing series, you all should check it out. The next book I read was an audiobook, and that is Stay With Me by Jay Lynn or Jennifer La Armantrout. This is book three in the series, and I've now listened to all three of them. This one is about Kala, and she, goes home to, during the summer from college. She has a huge scar on her face, that's what happened. She was in a horrible fire and she has a scar on her face. She doesn't have a lot of self-confidence in what she looks like and so she goes home because something happened and she has to go find her mom because she is totally screwed. And she runs into Jackson, who goes by Jackson. He works at the bar that her mom owns and it's their romance. Oh my gosh, there's so much drama. So I'm kind of going away from enjoying college romances because I'm so far removed from college. I'm almost four years out now. I graduated in 2015. Doesn't seem like a lot, but like now when you think about that, I'm like, that's so annoying what they're doing now because I'm like an adult now, you know? Not really. But I love this because she's it's not about school and college. She's on summer break and so she is focusing on getting her life together before she goes back to college because she is determined to become a nurse, I believe, and accomplish these goals she has set, and Jackson's definitely not one of her goals. He is so sweet. Oh my gosh. Like, from the moment he meets her, he is so nice and adorable, and of course, she has a lot of self-confidence issues, and he is just so nice to her. I loved it. Super sweet romance with some drama action thrown in the mix. I like this. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read the novella Destroy Me by Tahira Mafi. You guys know I absolutely love this. This is Warner's perspective right after Shatter Me, and I, you, you really get to know Warner and understand why he's such a jerk. And of course there's a reason, because why wouldn't there be a reason? And you start to like him. 
So, I'm super excited to start the next book because I love Warner and I need more. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Next, I got an arc of Yard Sale by Charlie Rose. This recently came out and this is a novella that was in the Players Anthology. I forget what it's called, but it was in an anthology that she published it in and now she's published to get solo. And this is about a snowboarder who has a one night stand with this girl who... I don't even know how to describe her. She totally goes out of her comfort zone when she's with him and they don't think they'll ever see each other again. There's like a really bad glare from this car. She doesn't think she'll ever see him again, but she has a huge secret that is going to pull them back together. That's all I can say. Went by super fast. It was super fun. And I gave it a four out of five stars. It was a little unbelievable with kind of felt insta lovey by the end. I was like, but it's because it's a novella. I have issues with pacing novellas anyways. So it was still a fun read. Seriously, there's like a glare on this car out there that's just like all up in my face right now and that is not cool. I don't know where to move. The next book I listened to on audio and that is All Played Out by Cora Carmite. This is... Torres's story, Mateo Torres and Nell, and Nell has gone through all of college really just focusing on school, and she decides to make a list. She is actually roommates with Dylan from book two. She makes a list of everything she wants to accomplish in college, and ends up running into Mateo Torres, and they start, they have an instant attraction, and he is actually determined to help her with her list, and they have a romance, and so Mateo is on the football team, and he is determined to make football his life, kind of like the other books too, and it's just a really fun romance. I did think it was a little bit unrealistic of how much she didn't know about college. Like, she didn't know what a keg stand was and, like, was Googling everything. And I'm like, okay, if you watch TV, you know what these things are. Like, I don't know. It just felt like she was a little bit too innocent and naive for a 21, 20 year old college student. Like, she's in college for four years. She knows what goes on. Like, yeah. But it's still really enjoyable. I love this series. And I'm dying for book four, which has not come out. And it was supposed to come out like two years ago and it hasn't yet. I get, I know, it, I know. I'm not saying anything bad about Cora. I know she has a lot of health issues going on right now and a lot of other books she has to be writing, but I just want my Stella's book. I'm dying for Stella's book, but whenever Cora is ready, she can write it, but gave us four to five stars. Next, I read Bound by Family by Ryan Michelle. This is a motorcycle romance and it is about a girl who is the daughter of a motorcycle gang, like her dad's in it. And she also between a guy from a different motorcycle gang and they're used to being loyal to their families. Some drama happens where the girl's family cannot protect her because she's a daughter. She needs to either become an old lady of this really horrible guy or a member, a woman of the club who services the men. That's all I'm going to say. And she wants to do neither so she kind of has to choose between her family and this new guy that she met. They have an instant attraction but they live really far away. He's in Georgia, she's in Florida. They're like four hours away from each other so they can't really make a relationship until they do. And of course, like she can't just abandon her family and go to another motorcycle club because she's loyal to her family. So it has to do about loyalty with families. It was pretty good. It was a little bit on the boring side. I give it a three out of five stars, but I'm really excited to read Ryan Michelle's other series because I heard it's better, but this was just an okay motorcycle romance. The next book I read was The Shop on Blossom Street by Debbie McComber. This is a yarn romance. Total opposite side of the spectrum from the motorcycle romance, but this is about Lydia who opened her own yarn shop, and it is kind of like Jane Austen Book Club. If you've watched that movie, I've only watched the movie or read the book. I don't know if the book's similar, but it follows four different women. So it's Lydia and then three people in her knitting class for a baby blanket, and they all come from different walks of life. One is like country club wife with her son having his first baby. Another is Alex who is doing community service because she just got out of jail. And then another is a woman in her 30s trying her third time with in vitro fertilization to have a baby. So they all are at different life points but they all end up helping each other. And it's a really, really cute story. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. which is so heartwarming to maybe want to join my own nitty group again because I had one in college but we all went our separate ways when we graduated and I really wish I had another knitting group because I miss it. The next audiobook I listened to was Jet by Jay Crownover. This is book two in the Mark Men series and Jet is actually a musician while most of the other guys do work at the tattoo parlor that Rule works at and this is Aiden who it was Shaw's best friend slash roommate from the first book and Aiden had a really crazy life in Kentucky but she's moved away, left that old girl behind and trying to be good and Jet thinks that she's too good for him and he's this screamer whatever that's called, metal, musician, and he doesn't want to become famous, he just is fine producing music and staying where he is. He has a lot of family drama going on, 
and it's their romance. It's really cute. I gave it a four out of five stars. It wasn't like amazing, but it was really fun and I can't wait to continue on in the series. The next book I read was the second book to that Debbie McComber book. This is a good yarn, which is what the shop's called. And Lydia is still in this book. She's still one of the four women, but it's a sock class. And now we have a girl who is trying to lose weight because she just moved there after her mother died to move in with her grandma and start senior year. We have a woman who is in the middle of a divorce because her husband cheated on her and she has two teenage children and then we also have another older woman who has retired I believe and she needs something to do so she is in knitting. I think those are the, the four with Lydia. And I really like this except for the girl, the teenager, who was so obsessed with losing weight because like the the author kept on saying like, oh, all her problems will be solved when she loses weight. And they're like, oh, well, he's obviously dating the thin cheerleader type and so she can't be with him. And like, I get that it was a teenager's mentality, but still I was like, really? I don't know. Some things just rubbed me the wrong way. I think that was because this is an older book. I don't know when it was published. This was published in 2006. So that was 12 years ago. There's a lot of different perspective about body, body positivity now than there was then. So, yeah. But I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It was so cute. And the last book I read was Secrets of a Summer Night by Lisa Kleypas. This is book 1 in the Wallflower series. This is a book I was reading for my um, traveling book club. So we did mark it up. I was the last person to get this. I was supposed to read it like 2 months ago. Finally got around to it. This is a romance about wallflowers. So they are the people who aren't picked. And they are just really dying for a husband because of financial reasons or societal reasons and so our main character her father had died so it's just her mother her brother and her she really needs a husband to help them financially and of course Simon Hunt and her are have this insane chemistry but he is just this self-made millionaire he's not a millionaire but self-made rich man and that's not really respected in London society they like old money and he's new money and he doesn't keep his mouth shut he just tells it as it is so no one really likes him it's their romance it's super cute I love the friendship that she formed with all the wallflowers her family's adorable the romance was really good so I give us a four out of five stars it was really really cute and that is my July wrap-up I'm so sorry this is like over half an hour long we'll see how long it is when I edit but I read a lot of books. Let me know what you read and what you were excited for me to read. If you agree with me or not, I would love to hear. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.